All right, so my name is Ayub, I'm a PM on the Graph team, and this is Itai, he's from Barracuda Sentinel, one of the awesome partners building solutions on top of the Microsoft Graph. So today we're just gonna talk real quick about what Graph is, and kind of move into what the opportunity is, and what partners are doing that's really interesting that we haven't seen before. Um, so for real quick, those who don't know, or haven't seen or heard, I know they said it a lot, but Graph is really all about you, and we like to think of it as it starts with slash me, and that is the endpoint that has your devices, your mail, your messages, your contacts, so on and so forth, right? And that kind of builds into what we think about as the gateway to the cloud. And it's the gateway to the cloud for your data, where you can build whatever app experiences you want through our gateway. When you think about Microsoft 365, that is Office, Win 10, and obviously EMS, there's a breadth of data that you can access to build interesting solutions. And obviously, at the bottom of that, it's always centered around Microsoft identity, you know, kind of that rich context, deep insights that you don't typically see, right? And that's the work we're doing to kind of pull together all of this across the company to allow you people build really interesting things. And this kind of surfaces as the opportunity, as we like to think of it in this case, where we have about 90% of Fortune 500 companies having data in the graph. We have over 700 Windows 10, 700 million Windows 10 devices contributing data to Graph, you know, 65 million people using EMS, so on and so forth, right? Every Microsoft asset and every Microsoft property is generating information that's been fed into the Graph, and then that you can now take that as a developer sitting here today and go and build on top of that and do a new experience. And so I think it's really interesting to see what Barracuda Sentinel did, where they now decided to say, let's take all that opportunity, that gateway, that data, and how do we infuse that with AI to do things that we haven't seen before? And so I'll let Ite talk more about. All right. Thank you. Hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I'll be talking a, a little bit about, about our integration uh, with Graph API uh, to build our kind of uh, core product called Sentinel. Uh, what Sentinel is, is um, uh, if you, it's a first uh, AI solution for catching spear phishing and other malicious emails uh, within our customers' uh, tenants. Uh, it does that by uh, connecting with the Graph API. Uh, what we, when we started this off, what the, the kind of the, the core functionality around Graph that we needed was how are we going to monitor every incoming email uh, that comes into our customers' mailboxes? To do that. Um, we use the Graph API, and I'll describe that in more detail and show code examples uh, in the next few slides. But what Sentinel does is then listens in on those incoming emails. Uh, it learns communication patterns. Uh, it uses uh, machine learning to, to find malicious emails, and then it uh, quarantines those emails or, or permanently deletes those emails based on user's choice. Um, uh, so, when we started this, we had a few options that we wanted to explore, um, and they were, they're all based on, on a single term, it's called a webhook, so for those of you who haven't heard that term, a webhook is kind of an HTTP callback that you can subscribe to that would, will deliver notif change notifications. So, uh, for example, there's a, a new email comes in, then we expect to receive that webhook notification uh, telling us that there is a, has been a change in the user's mailbox um, and that we can now go and retrieve that. Uh, so, quickly going over the three options that we kind of um, had in front of us when we started this was, so one was let's receive the webhook. Once we receive the webhook, uh, we need to go and fetch messages, and we'll maintain a timestamp of when was the last time that we did that for that specific mailbox. Uh, that was actually the solution we started with. Um, we were maintaining a timestamp per, per mailbox to do that. Um, the second solution that we were considering, and that's a classic, I'll, I'll, I'll give more details on that later on, was use that webhook and then use the Delta query, uh, which means basically kind of doing the same thing as option one, just without needing to manage anything. Delta has a token, you do manage, you do save that token and you keep making those Delta queries and every request would, would give you only the last uh, changes that happened since the last time that you used that. Hmm? Use that? All right. Um, so, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain why we, we, we didn't go with that solution. The third option, and also the winner, is receiving that webhook, which does contain the message ID that was just received, and then go and retrieve that based on the ID. Uh, that was the fastest and most reliable method, 
uh, after some experimentations, we decided to go with that uh, for our solution. Uh, there's no need to keep any kind of state on that. You always have the message ID, and you go and you retrieve that message and process it. Uh, the reason we, we didn't use the Delta, even though it's, it's a really good candidate, is that Delta currently works on top of mail folders, which means that you would need to basically sync the entire mail folder structure um, and possibly even call Delta the same amount of uh, mail folders as the user has. So we decided that's too much of an overhead for us um, and doesn't allow us to achieve the latency that we, that we want. Uh, so a little bit about the architecture, how Sentinel actually does this. Uh, so there are three kind of main components here. One is the subscription management, which makes, which, which tells Graph, I want to receive um, subs webhooks for all of these mailboxes. Uh, there's the listener side, which receives those webhooks. It's a very lightweight web server that just receives those webhooks and queues them. And then there's the pipeline, which is, is it's the big chunk that actually downloads the email and processes it and decides what to do. Uh, so with a little bit more details and examples, um, so the subscription management part does need to happen per mailbox. There's no way to listen in on, on the entire tenant with a single subscription. Um, so what we do is we list all the users. That's the get users. Um, the get users call uh, that you see here. Uh, and then we, we create a subscription uh, per mailbox. The next part is listening in on those webhooks. Uh, the webhook payload, you'll see in a code example in the next few slides. Uh, but it's very, it's very lightweight. It just says, I want to respond very quickly to, to Graph and tell them that I, I acknowledge receiving that webhook. So you know, I, we, we get that webhook, we queue it on our end, and we respond with a 200. Uh, we, we have that. Uh, and then the pipeline is actually where all the magic happens in terms of analyzing the email. So it downloads the email with the get message call. Then it, it does all the AI magic on top of that. And then it decides what to do. If this is a malicious email, if, if, if it's fraud, then it will either quarantine the email or delete it based on customer uh, settings. Uh, all right, so with that, let's, let's see uh, the really interesting part, which is the code. Um, so the first component is subscription management. Kind of the key thing here to notice is that uh, in order to manage those subscriptions, we're going to need to to save them because we're going to need to renew them periodically every almost three days. Um, so we do need to to be able to to keep track of them. The second part why we need that uh, is we need to be able to resolve a subscription. Uh, into an access token and a user. So we, we, our product is used by multiple tenants, different customers. So we need to be able to find that right access token and right user mailbox and use that to retrieve the message later on. So if you can see here, uh, we do have the, the, the subscription part the call is a post to, to the subscriptions endpoint. Um, uh, there are a few options here, but the, the really interesting thing is notification URL, which means this is where the webhooks will be delivered to. So this is our web server. Um, and, and it should be up and running and be able to receive those. The other interesting thing is that you'll also see in the next slide is the client state, which is kind of a shared secret between us and Graph to make sure that when we're receiving notifications, we can, we can safely assume that they're coming from Graph and that nobody else is spoofing them. Uh, so we do save that. Uh, this is Python code. It doesn't really matter how you save it, uh, but we save those notifications. Uh, and there is a renew function as well that needs to run periodically before that subscription is expired. And that's actually very important, because if it expires, then you can no longer renew it, and which means you're going to need to have some kind of a fallback and, and, and recreate it from scratch. So that's the subscription management part. So receiving the webhooks here doesn't even have any API calls uh, and doesn't work with the graph. It receives actually this, this payload from graph. We use Node.js to be super efficient with I.O. and just receive and queue that, uh, that payload and get it done as soon as, as possible. Um, so you can see that we do verify that uh, client state uh, that we previously defined on the subscription. We do add some, some, uh, some extra data 
so that we can later track that webhook uh, for analytic purposes. Uh, but that's it. We, we, we queue it to some magical queue service and, and we process it later on. That's, that's all that there is to actually receiving the webhooks. And processing the webhooks, uh, that's where we kind of re receive that webhook uh, payload. Uh, and we have a subscription ID there. This subscription ID now needs to be resolved into an access token and a user ID, uh, which is what happens uh, bec because we already saved that uh, uh, on the subscription. Our subscription database model already stores that information. Uh, once we have the token and the user and the message ID, then we can very reliably retrieve that message from graph. Um, uh, the, the, the graph call is, is, a, is you can see that get. Uh, it's a very straightforward get. We do specify the fields. That's a best practice uh, to specify only the fields we're interested in. In our case, we are interested in, in, a lot of, in a lot of the data, a lot of metadata, and including the body uh, of the email as well to, to, to analyze. Uh, so we retrieve that. Um, we do discard drafts, and we do discard emails that have been received um, longer than an hour ago or so, just because we do receive webhooks for emails that are moved uh, or even drafts that are being saved. So those are also change notifications that we receive, and in, in our case, we're not interested in actually processing those emails. Uh, all right, so that, those are kind of the three main components um, that, that, that I described early on, uh, and some kind of best practices and, and learnings that we, we've had a chance to kind of discover along the way. Uh, so rate limiting is a big one. We do self-rate limit uh, to avoid being throttled by the graph API. Uh, we use Redis for that. It's on a mailbox level. The graph, it, it's, it hasn't always been on a, on a mailbox level, but now it is. I think it allows quite a bit of requests per minute or per, per second. Um, uh, so we do have that kind of window uh, on our end, and we, we avoid we avoid the rate limiting from graph itself by doing it ourselves. Um, and, and working with webhooks, uh, so the main kind of learning here is let's do things quickly. Let's acknowledge receiving it, and let, let's worry about processing it later. Um, that was kind of the component that was the, the Node.js webhook listener uh, that, that, was, that you saw in the code example. It just doesn't do any business logic, receives the payload, and, and, and moves on. Um, uh, renewing the subscription, uh, I mentioned that's a key point. Um, and as far as webhooks go, I do encourage you to check out the docs. There are webhooks for different kind of resources. We do, res we do use that for, for syncing users as well, because we do need to sync not only uh, uh, mail, but also users, because a, a new employee joins the company. We are expected to, to monitor that new mailbox that just popped out. Uh, so we do use that uh, webhook and, and delta mechanism for, for syncing users. And I think uh, webhooks can also be uh, used for other things on graph, so I encourage you to check it out. Um, and as far as the webhooks and Delta go, uh, so we're not using it, like I mentioned, because of the mail folder limitation, but if you're looking to only sync a specific folder, let's say inbox or sent items, then that's a, that's a great, great thing to do uh, with, with webhooks and Delta. Uh, it's probably the most efficient way to sync. Uh, and it, it, as mentioned, you can do that for other resources as well. Um, and just a few words about kind of how we scale this and, 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 and how do we do it in real time. The key is to create small components that can be scaled separately. So like receiving webhooks and then analyzing emails and then maybe quarantining emails. All these pieces are, are, are scaled separately uh, with a microservice architecture. Uh, so we found that, that breaking it down is actually key if we want to scale it. Um, yes, sir. Uh, and some, some kind of, well, to, to, to wrap it up, some, some future thoughts. Uh, there is a batching that we're not currently using, but we are exploring this opportunity where we can maybe uh, make a single API call to graph and retrieve up to single emails at the same time, um, <coughs> obviously for the same access token, for the same tenant, uh, but that could speed us up a great deal. Um, the webhooks that I mentioned for users, this is, it was just announced, um, I think, uh, yesterday or, or two days ago, that this was now released to version one uh, on production. Uh, so that's something we, uh, that the also we're, we, we're using. 
Um, and, and list subscriptions uh, is something that is now in beta. That's something that can be used potentially to debug uh, cases where you're, you, may not, you may not be sure if all the different kind of if all the subscriptions are still valid uh, because you do store them, but maybe you didn't ref refresh them, maybe you didn't renew them on time. So that's something uh, that, that can be used. It's currently in beta, but uh, it uh, sounds like an interesting opportunity uh, for future explorations. And uh, yep, that's it. And so thanks, today. And I think the key things to remember are just they started somewhere and they went on a journey, right? And so we on the product side are continuously evolving graph, adding way more data sets, way more capabilities, and way more features. Um, there's a booth in the back. We're listening to a lot of your feedback and things. A couple of the team members here who work on Delta Query, Webhooks, and so on and so forth, right? And so just because we've added lit subscriptions, um, batching actually supports up to 20 requests that are uh, at a time now, and that's in GA, doesn't mean we're stopping there. We want to hear your scenarios and we want to hear what you guys are interested in doing so that we can help companies like Barracuda Sentinel and others sitting in this audience today actually build and grow their products, right, and kind of take advantage of M365 as that ecosystem and that extensibility platform to make your apps more interesting. So we'll be here hanging out, a couple of team members in the back, and obviously you can find us in the graph booth all the way in the center. Thanks. <laughs>